Okay, so I done goofed. Bad. If you watched one of my previous videos where a friend and I rated anime couples, link in the description, you may have noticed at one point that one anime just kinda snuck into D tier. Never commented on it, never mentioned what show it was, just it suddenly showed up. Well, I did comment on it. This is a show where the main romance I didn't really care a lot about. Um, I don't think a lot of development really happened, um, so I apologize if I upset anyone by putting it in D tier. And while I was gathering clips for all the shows, I made a realization when I went to get the clips for Tata Never Falls in Love. And that realization is that I'm an absolute moron with crap for memory. And if I was having such a hard time remembering it, I should have put it in the way I watched this category. But no, I decided to double down that it must have been bad and slapped it into D. But I guess I'm ultimately thankful because it gave me a reason to revisit this show. So here I am, to rectify my glaring mistake and set the record straight. Even though probably nobody would have noticed if I had said nothing. And this isn't going to be a review of the show exactly, but rather me just talking about what the show did that I liked as a way to make up for how I did it dirty, and maybe give reasons that's worth checking out yourself. And if you want to skip the bulk of the video and cut to the biggest reason, just skip ahead to the timestamp below and I won't even blame you. Tata Never Falls in Love is a rom-com that aired back in the spring of 2018. We follow Mitsuyoshi Tada, a member of his school's photography club, because this was 2018 and we were able to go outside and do recreational things with friends. As a child, Tada's parents came down with a severe case of being an anime protagonist's parents, and ever since then, Tada's been emotionally shut off from the world around him. Through a chance encounter, he meets Teresa Wagner, visiting Japan from her home country of Larsenburg. Teresa is a massive weeaboo, who is excited to see all the sights from her favorite show, Rainbow Shogun. Bonding through the photography club, Teresa gets to experience Japan through the guidance of Tada, while Tada eventually learns how to feel feelings again by Teresa's influence. There are a lot of things this show did great, and honestly, I am super mad at myself for writing this show off in the rating couples video, because I thought highly enough of this show when I watched it, that I had actually taken notes and this was going to be my first non-AMV mixtape video on my channel, before the fluffiest anime you'll ever see, and before a separate project that thankfully shall remain forever lost to time. I feel like the show does a great job at avoiding some of the pitfalls and cliches that other rom-coms tend to fall victim to and rely on, which, according to reviews on my anime list, is not a feeling that other people tend to share, which frankly makes me wonder if we even watch the same show. Right out of the gate, one of the biggest things is the source of tension and drama in the relationships. It doesn't come from characters acting tsundere towards each other, nor hijinks that lead to misunderstandings, or needlessly complicated love triangles. Rather, the drama comes from the difficulties and stress that naturally occur from developing feelings that, without giving too much away, are doomed to be unrequited or impeded for reasons outside of your own control, as well as the pursuit of staying true to your feelings and living a life with no regrets. And we get a really unique situation from our quote antagonist, though I really hesitate to even use that word. Because yes, there is a romantic rival, but he's not a douche. He's a character who, even if you want Teresa and Tata to end up together, you still can't help but love and kind of root for him to be happy as well. Because in the end, and for all the relationships in the show, it's not necessarily about getting the person you're after, but wanting them to be happy and to do what's going to be best for them which, when there are multiple relationships with some featuring a rival, is an incredibly refreshing, non-toxic situation to watch develop. And related to that note, it was also impressive how in a 13-episode anime, we were able to get enough exposure to the supporting cast that they too all got their moment in the spotlight and have their own subplots and development arcs, 
to have their own stories told, but never by straying too far from the plot and the relationship at the core of the show. Now, I'm not going to say it was done perfectly, like, there's subplots that were obvious from the get-go, and I'm not sure if they were supposed to be or not, as well as some developments that just kind of felt like they sprang up and felt sort of out of place. But screw all of that. None of that matters. Because this show features two amazing things. One, the most goodest cat to ever grace anime. Look at this little chonker. Nyanko Big Son is the most fluffiest little boy and I love him. And two, the show features a cat romance. We get an incredible subplot of Nyanko Big Son and his pursuit of Cherry. And it is so precious and adorable to watch this pudgy little puddin fall in love. Nyanko Big Son and his romance with Cherry are 100% a reason alone to watch this show. If you like rom-com, I do sincerely suggest checking out the show. While it doesn't find its way onto my top rom-com list, it is at the very least a solid enough show that I felt the need to make this video and atone for the mistake that I made when passing judgment on this ship. The development between Teresa and Tata, as Teresa learns to reach out and take hold of what's important to her, and Tata learns to be honest with his own emotions, it's an adorable and heartwarming tale. So, with all of this said, where would I rank Teresa and Tata now? I don't know, high B? Ah shit, I forgot rent a girlfriend in Oji San to Marshmallow. Uh, boop. And I do not remember this show well, but I feel like it was strictly okay. Maybe? No, no, we are not going through this again. Before my normal shoutouts, I want to give a big thank you to the Chi Draws for the new channel icon commission. I felt it was time to finally upgrade from the crude Photoshop that I threw together, and I love the finished product that I got. If you're interested in an art commission of your own, you can find a link to her store in the description below. And then, as always, I'd like to give a big thank you to Chi Hayes, which I promise has nothing to do with the previous shoutout, as well as my other Patreon supporters. We actually just hit my first goal on Patreon, which I'm incredibly thankful for everyone's support towards. If you'd like to support me as well, you can find the link to my Patreon and Twitter in the description below. Until next time, I'm CJ Picor, the Angry Avocado, and I still don't have a sign-off.